Oh my word, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's attractive. So do you reckon our window frame saveable, Carl? No. Oh, tremendous. No. So I'm here with Carl from Chortles Top Shop and anybody who's in the Mark 1 golf scene knows that uh, Carl's pretty much the man for a Mark 1 Cabriolet roof. So he's going to take us around our Mark 1, our eBay catastrophe that we've been putting back on the road and making good and um, let us know what he thinks. He's going to give us some overview of the common rust areas and issues that you see with Mark 1 Golf Cabriolets. Carl? Okay. So your Mark 1 Golf Cabriolet, they suffer from various rust issues. Um, rust issues including the missing tailgate seal, which yeah. unfortunately what happens is these perish and fall out. Many people don't realise they should even be there. What happens is water will come in, it will ingress through the gap, sit into the bottom of the tailgate and it will rot away. Wow, so there's okay. just something for you there. Secondly, Normally from factory, um, the hoods were made from PVC, vinyl, people call them different things. But these suffer, for, over the years, suffer from UVA sunlight attack, which break down the plasticizers of the material itself. The material itself really is a cotton sheet with molten plastic poured over the top. So during the manufacturing process, it's put under imprint rollers, which will give it the texture. The material is then cut into pieces and machined and turned into your hood. So once these start to break down, moisture will seep through because the material becomes porous. The backing sheet, the cotton, then shrinks. So what we end up with is this big frowning above the, above the windows. So whenever you see a roof like this, it's because the material is shrunk. Because this is the path of least resistance, because your cable will run from here to a spring, the cable tends to pull and the spring will extend. I see so many times people saying, you just need a new pair of side tension cables because they've snapped. In a lot of cases, that isn't correct. So people will end up spending money on a pair of side tension cables when really what they need is a new hood. And how's our hood looking? It's, it feels pretty, I mean, it's still fairly flexible, I guess, but it does feel, you know, it feels quite sort of stiff. Well, your issue is also on these, because these are so sewn together, is we end up with this, which we call stitch rot. Mm -hmm. Now on this hood, we have what's called an imprint molded line, seam line, which is pressed in uh, with, a, with a tool, with tooling, to give it this fake stitch line. A lot of others are just so, uh, do have a stitch line uh, made out of thread. But obviously over the years, the cotton rots and then it falls apart. So on other cars, underneath here, there's a pocket in which the cable runs in, yeah. into, and this will be stitched. And the pocket comes undone and the cable will hang out. So th these are your issues uh, for these on the car. Okay, and I understand the cars themselves like to like to rust around this back area. I think you mentioned before yeah. the, around the windows and how's ours looking? The issue with the windows is whenever it rains, the water always sits into the lower corner edges and the very, very bottom edge. Now, if the installer doesn't fit the, the, the glass and the seal in the correct manner, then water will continue to get will continue to get in. It will sit it at the bottom and it will rot generally, generally the bottom of the frame. And I think once we take this car apart, Neil will be able to give you uh, a, an insight and a view of what the rear window frame ends up like. Oh, more rust, great. More rust, more rust. <laughs> so turning to the rear cable channel, there's a cable that goes between the material here, which is then driven into the channel. There's a small piece of, of rust in there, but once the car's cleaned up and painted, I don't envisage that being an issue. I'll tell you what, we've got a torch inside. Let's grab that and we can actually have a look to see how bad the rust is. Okay, so that 
That doesn't look too bad. There's a bit of bit of bubbling going on. Yeah. But I guess we can make that the body shop's problem. Yeah. Awesome. Another issue is the hood is actually, we can see the remnants of the hole here. Now, the hoods are pinned to the body of the car. But behind this piece, this piece of steel here, there's a metal tab and there's a screw that goes through here with the half moon trim, which goes into here. Now, what happens is if the, the tab rots away and falls off, which they invariably do, the screw will sit inside the hole and it will rock up and down as the hood goes up and down and will eventually rip a hole into the body. Get outside now and grab it. There we go, nice. Was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall Depending upon the manufacture of the hood, um, some side pan side pieces, which is this piece, that's, this piece that's here, yeah. would maybe go up from here to here, depending upon the manufacture of the hood. But generally, they'll come to about there, so you don't normally often need to take the top one out. Okay. Everything, I think, pretty much everything is dead on this hood. Mm. Common issue is that most of us suffer from. Yeah. Um, is this remnants of strap here would go through this interliner and padding yeah there's the remnants of it because it's snapped broken off and as you can see the shape of the hood at the moment the way it's curving out yeah when really what it should do it should fold in concertina wise yeah you see so many mark ones with a big yeah. with a big loop of hood out the back exactly. uh, that must be what causes it then it is and one of the key uh, contributors to that is that People don't fit the uh, the hood cover, the tonneau cover, when yeah. the hood's down. So therefore, we end up with a lot of back fresh of the wind blowing, ah, pushing right. in, okay. yeah, yeah, pushing yeah. against everything, uh, and it can also stretch and dirty your headliner. Yeah. So my advice is always, always fit your, your, your tonneau cover, cover. Yeah. yeah, for when you when you're out in the van. with a lot of other fitting companies um, is that when these hoods are fitted is when they go to trim it off they merely come across with a knife and trim it off what they really don't realize is they end up cutting through the headliner <laughs> Yeah. All the way or just part of the way? Yeah, you just close it down. 
Yeah, definitely into the interliner, put holes in the horse hair. Oh my word, look at that. <laughs> oh, that's attractive. Well, this is your interliner and your padding. Obviously someone's tried to attempt to repair this with gaffer tape. But basically what happens is the capping sheets tend to rot, yeah. fall apart. And the padding, this is a, a rubberized horsehair and uh, formed into a sheet. And it's latex, uh, latex rubber that it's all mixed up with. And over the years, a latex rubber, like rubber does, tends to, uh, to de tends to decompose. It rocks, and therefore your padding falls apart. So if you find little bits of straw and grassy kind of bits and pieces on your parcel shelf or on your back seat, nine times out of ten, it's going to be your padding is falling apart. So do you reckon our window frame saveable, Carl? No. Oh, tremendous. No. It's, um, it's dead, is it? Another thing is dead, Jim. It's uh, another thing to add to the list. To the list of stuff. Yeah. You ruined the frames held in by four 10mm nuts in each corner. And subsequently, in the top, it's actually hung on your two webbing straps. And it's simply held in, if we can wiggle this out. There we go. Because this webbing strap here is doubled over, it can be a bit hard to pull out. But it's simply... Oh, it's a pin. So we take the pin out, that reduces the diameter of the webbing, and your webbing pops out. Pulls out. Nice, I'll hold that end. Okay. And they either replace them with a piece of sponge, or they wrap these in sponge. And it's the worst thing you can do because the sponge does not have the same air spacing as the original padding and therefore any moisture will end up being trapped and we've had cars that are a have got mould running through them because the moisture cannot escape there's the ugly side so we have a rust eaten edge all the way down severe delamination and rot in the corner and the issue with these is you have to have enough meat left of the bridge to turn it over for you when the seal comes over it has to lap and go on over this back side yeah and if there's not enough rot if there's not enough good steel then what will happen is the window and the seal will suck inside to the cut inside the car mm -hmm. and so and of course you won't get a good seal so the window frames then Carl you know there's various sorts of uh, window frames out there by uh, various different um, suppliers um, ours um, are the correct as you notice on the insert this is one that we've taken apart for demonstration purpose you'll see there's square cutouts oh yeah and clearly evidence of rusting from the old frame yeah now some frames um, um, don't come with the correct fixings however the ones that we supply have the matching square nuts generally ours would always come fully made up well it's a good thickness of steel there as well yeah. what's that like <coughs> two mil or something yeah. right so ours are a one piece stamped uh, unit where yeah. others um, may come in various like manufacturers yeah, yeah. different pieces then you know uh, come in parts and and uh, welded together where this is a one piece stamp frame nice. now, these are the ones that we use uh, these are the ones that we recommend but, um, we know that these are fit for the job nice one thanks Try to do is 
re-glue everything back down. This has obviously been worked on here, but they've just literally glued, re-glued everything back down. Now what, what can happen is these metal tabs, we had them before where they just literally Just looking at that thing, I bet they're a place that goes. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then just take the knife. Oh, my scissors, I think, are in the bag. Already? Or, or on there. The black scissors are on the workbench, maybe. Got on. Right. On the roof. Do just you do that side. And you might as well do the, the black plastic bit at the end as well. Just cut that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And this is the thing that we want, this rod. You save that, save the band. Yeah. You'll find halfway down, it's attached with that strap there. Yeah. So you just need to cut through that. Right, and that's roll your padding off. Done. Right. Right. Now you just On the frame where I gather with these pins, these are hydraulically pressed in the factory, there's little spacer washers. Yeah. And what happens is, and because people don't tend to maintain or oil the roof, over the years the moisture gets in and the rust attacks the plastic and yeah. the plastic snaps and falls out, it crumbles, falls out. Um, How would you get in to do that if it's all on? Well, with the roof open halfway, you can access. You can actually see you that can stuff. You can yeah. access all the all the various hinge points. That's you can see, it. yeah, you can see the plastic space of washer here. Then we end up with what's called frame shake, whereas obviously, as the frame goes up and down, these obviously hold the frame in the correct position as mm -hmm. it raises and lowers. Once they start to fall out, the frame can twist from side to side. You can end up with a permanent twist in the frame. The pins, because they go through this hole, will end up rotating as everything moves round. And because it does that, these holes become elongated. And if you're not careful, what can happen is, as the frame drops, the pins will drop into the elongated hole and you will struggle to close them forward. You know, minimally once a year, go around with a bit of three-in-one, a rag underneath to catch any drips uh, and just make sure. And How's that looking? Yeah, so far, all your white spacer washers uh, are here. Okay, that's the result yeah. then. Um, moisture sits in there and it rusts. And if a car has been sat with its roof up uh, for so long, or even with it down for so long, by the way, you're not supposed to have your roof in the down position for more than three days. So it's actually in your Volkswagen handbook. Wow! Just tell you that. So what happens is once the moisture sits inside here, this pin here uh, can end up seizing. So subsequently, as the roof is then forced and pulled or pushed open, it can end up shearing. It will break the top end of this bracket, or it will twist and shear the pin. And therefore, see what we can have a look at that right now, okay. because that's exactly what's happened on the other side of this. There you go. That's exactly what's happened here. Yeah, yeah. It's um, sheared off the bottom here. Yeah. It would normally be if I can um, use use something to point with should really be bolted into there yeah it's a 13 mil bolt and that would go onto there and hold that into position but that's sheared so what we'll have to do then is grind this end off here and we can use a repair bolt and a nylock washer to secure all that um, I have a spare bracket so hopefully we should be able to get that done today all right tell me about these pockets then Carl on headliners a lot of people say I don't want the headliner changing and as you can see the way that the hood is made up from the factory on a bare frame the first thing that's fitted is your headliner mm -hmm. now the issue you have with these is they come unglued here they tend to go dry 
So that's going to make that sag. Yeah, so it does so sag. You've got a saggy headliner. That's yeah. probably the problem. Part of the reason. But one of the issues that we, we do come across, but then we find that these pockets here, these are in quite good condition, but a lot of the times this material rots. You can see on that one there, on that side, Neil, you can see how the material's got, gone quite thin and holy, you can see. Yeah. There's the comparison. Yeah. And that's what happens. So sometimes they fail on the corners. Alright, so part of the problem with our roof, as you can see here, is that the pin, which is supposed to go through here and then through there and out the other side, which is your main hinge pivot, is sheared off completely. And basically what Carl said is we're going to need to get that out, drill it out, and then replace it with with a bolt, a nylock nut and a spacer. So what we want to do, we want to put these on like that, okay. and have one like that, and then we want to get something like some tape okay. or tie wrap. Is a problem, yeah, that's why we undo them. So you can just about squeeze a new brion. That's not too bad. It'd be all right, isn't it? All righty. There we go, the roof is off ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video for this one. Part two will be us replacing the roof, so basically fitting a new hood, interliner, padding, headliner, new window frame of course because ours is rotten and it's so important when you're fitting a hood to a Mark 1 I think that you get somebody who knows exactly how to do it and how to do it right. Don't think there's any argument that Carl from Chortles Top Shop knows exactly what he's doing. So that's it for this video. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the process of getting rid of the roof off a uh, Mark 1 Golf ready for it to be uh, recovered. That's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, give us a like and a subscribe if you feel we've earned it. Uh, thanks again for all the comments from people and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.